God, what a sad existence. What a sad character arc that was. Oh, please be alive. Oh, no, or not. <laughs> Why did that give me hope? What a fool I am. Yeah, we got the power. It's alter souls. Still kind of chewing on that one. Wondering what it means exactly. I feel like this pair is going to be really cool. This is going to be glorious. Get it? Keep an eye on him. He's so fast. <laughs> Pretty good for a newborn. Oh, damn. Yeah, his powers are sort of unlimited in what they could do with it. He turned into his little uh, chibi Nezuko form for a bit. He's so cute! <laughs> Stop that. Some things are so disturbing about that attack. Take these little humans, little shriveled humans. I don't know, I felt pretty convicted last episode. Oh, these are the worst boss fights when they spawn smaller enemies. I hate those. It's so annoying. Just waste all your time and energy on clearing paths just for them to regenerate. Yeah, definitely some Fullmetal Alchemist vibes here. Makes it a little easier then. Right. Yeah, I'm with him on this one. It's pretty easy to tear things down. It's not easy to form this kind of resilience. It's kind of a fool's victory, you know, to think that you're smart by discarding with everything. Thinking that humanity or the world or existence itself is comprehensible by the individual, one, and worthless, two, or like somehow beneath you. Anybody can pick holes in things, you know, that's a measure of nothing. I think it's partly seductive because it's a lot easier, but that's part of what makes people like Yuji and other characters in the show who are kind of grappling with these ideas more impressive is that they sort of refuse to give in to the, well, the lyrics of the opening. Even if it takes a lot of time for that to be refined enough to a point where it's you know, it's actually solid. There's something that seems universal to hero stories that is about the, re the reluctance to give in to things that are kind of an out from the hard work of being great. There's a kind of insistence on aiming high and kind of tacitly accepting the, the difficulty of that along the way. I mean, this is bigger than even ideology. It's just habits even, you know, people are going to look foolish, floundering around, trying to work at greatness until they achieve greatness. And in fact, I think at some level, people who have kind of made that that pact with the devil that they've just given up kind of fear that because it means they've just wasted their whole thing. They've wasted their time and energy. They're not as smart as they thought they were. Other people did the things they were afraid of and got the things that actually they wanted, if that makes sense. It's one of those things where you can be behind and ahead at the same time. Yuji's behind, but also he's ahead. How'd that changing shape work out for you? Well, usually looking pretty ahead right now, though. Oh, he's, he's inspired by this. Interesting. Death! <laughs> having so much fun. Do what? Do what, exactly? What kind of idle transfiguration does, does he have lurking? Oh, no. Oh, his domain expansion! Oh, interesting. Can't wait to see what it looks like. Very sensual. Man, this is so, so freaky and weird, but awesome. Self-embodiment of perfection. Indeed. You're gonna catch these hands, literally, or metaphorically. What have you done? That was quite the opening. <laughs> Kicking him around and, you know, getting him near death made him perfect, it seems. I've heard that the creator of the show and the creator of My Hair Academia are friends, and honestly, I, I feel like that, that comes across. I mean, he looks so much like Shigaraki, and now we have this fixation on hands. Could it be a coincidence? Yes. But I feel like it might also not be. Just in general, I feel like I feel the influence of a lot of shows in this show. I think in some way the whole movie discussions that occur are kind of a sign of the author's personality, I'm guessing. He seems to be a real fan of media. Like, I'm also convinced that there are a lot of references to Attack on Titan in the show. There was the, the episode that was called To You Eventually or whatever, someday, echoing to you in a thousand years. And then also there's a certain thing that happens in episode five of both of the shows that is sort of a weird coincidence. Episode 13, Tomorrow. Oh, he got shut out! Oh no! Oh no! Not I mean. I believe in non not I mean. Believe in not I mean. That's a lot of hands. What does it mean? I want to hear more about this perfection. The innate domain stuff is so interesting. I feel like it, it contains so much about their character in a way that I can't fully understand yet. 
Alright, so he's, he admits he's outmatched. Right, it's 100% accuracy. Yikes, this is not great. When does overtime start? What time is it overtime? Does it have another super power called retirement? And baguette flashback. Sandwich. I don't like it when cashiers know me like that. <laughs> Maybe it's because I don't want to know myself like that. I don't want to look at my own habits. You're buying a two liter of Pepsi Cola again today for the eighth consecutive day. Yeah, exorcists are the worst. Those jujutsu sorcerer sorcerers. <laughs> I feel like he's the kind of guy that will be really hated or really loved, depending on the person's characteristics. Exactly. He just called him Cherry Boy, didn't he? This is a really uh, warm, <laughs> healthy office environment. I've worked in this environment before. So I've gotten the sense from comments that people expect me to like fall in love with this character. And I do like him. And I suspect I haven't even seen his greatest moments yet. But actually, my, my gut sense about it at first is that it's a little bit too close to home. I think I mentioned the fact that he represents kind of an extreme version of a side of myself I've kind of worked to rein in. And now the, the work connection as well. I actually think the characters I fall in love with the deepest are very often characters that have things I don't have that I want. Perhaps my favorite character ever, Erwin Smith, the one and only, is sort of the man I want to be, but I'm not in many ways, which is fine. I'll never be that character. But by aiming high, I can sort of close some gaps. You know, I can reach an average between me and that, which is satisfactory. In this show, I'd say so far my favorite character is Gojo mastery, being carefree, which I'm certainly not, while maintaining a certain level of compassion. I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to draw a broader trend between me and the characters that I fall in love with, but it's hard to find exactly what that thread is. But I think it is true that some of the time, you know, I'm most allergic, the qualities that I've identified as risks for myself. <laughs> Solid goal. Who, who is this guy? Get out of my head. Well, that's not quite me. That was my plan for to retire, though. You don't need sleep when you got this money. I like these sandwich shots <laughs> interspersed between everything and sandwich. Right, so that's Gojo's job. Yeah, he's got the job. I actually don't agree with that at all. Weirdly, this feels out of character, which is ridiculous to say, not fully knowing this character, but that feels more like a societal opinion or, or you know, an author's insert. It's really easy to hate on, on big money. It doesn't evoke any kind of positive emotion, really, but I just don't think it's fair to say that finance and managing large sums of money is not hugely important. The focus of these discussions is often on money itself, but I think what's sort of lost in the equation is that when done right, money should be a representation of value created. The real revolution in money and currency is to provide liquidity between exchanges of value. If I go through the painstaking work of making shoes, let's say, and people want those shoes, then they'll trade me what they have for those shoes. But what if I don't want what they have? You know, what if they have eggs and I don't need eggs? Money just ensures that I can take my value and get something else of value that I want. That's really what it is. So when it comes to large sums of money, it's really no different. It's just a question of how to take value value and use it in a way where as much value is created from that value as possible. Because just like you can waste money, you can squander value. There are certain things that can only be funded by aggregation of money. When you think about what stocks are even, you're essentially a part owner in a company and providing it a chance to raise money to use towards doing what it does best in a way that might only occur if they could aggregate money at a large scale. Without taking any particular position, it's way more complicated than what he just said. There's something fundamentally important that's lost in discussing these issues because one, it doesn't tug at the heartstrings. There's nothing local and connected about it. And two, even worse, there's an easy connection to make between money and greed. And that's for good reason, but that's also not the, the sum of the whole equation. <laughs> There's the weight on her shoulders. He was seeing this the whole time. You got something on your, uh, on your shirt there. How do you explain that? You're a magician, an air massage. It's your calling, man. What's your call? <laughs> this is an in-depth relationship with a bakery cashier. Although I guess at the end of the day, it just wasn't for him, which is fine. It wasn't for me either.
Losing the goggles. I hope I haven't seen his best episodes yet. I hope this is not his last episode. Man, if you thought that relationship was satisfying, imagine if you had had a girlfriend. He just bust through? He just punch his way through? <laughs> Hell yeah. I love a guy who doesn't know his place in exactly the right ways. Put them in the same category, those two. Forbidden soul. Wow. Right, right. This again, yeah. Damn, Sukuna just taking taking care of things. There's something so odd but beautiful about this, this scene. It's very surreal. Excellent. Is he really dead? Did he just die? It was really unclear. This show keeps surprising me with like I, I think there's there are arcs being set up, I think there are parallels being set up, and there's death. Though I don't think he's actually gone. Unlike Junpei, unfortunately. Yeah, what did just happen? Sukuna had enough. Well, <laughs> may as well, while he's down. Are you still having a great time? The guy's resilient, I give him that. Is this how you want to go out? Yeah, you made himself a really big target. It was kind of weird that he had no facial expression there at all. He's popping like a balloon. But no, that's... <laughs> ...extraction. Alright, he's out. I mean, he's he's been through a lot. And instead of going after him, he helps, he helps Itadori. Not necessarily enemies. Even if Sukuna is sideless. Looks like he regenerates pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, since he survived. I don't know, it's tough to say what the final outcome is. Junpei's gone, that's a real loss. But he definitely woke Yuji up. But at the same time, Mahito also learned from that experience. If I had to take a guess, I feel like that encounter made both of them stronger, ultimately. And he tacitly condoned what he was doing by fighting alongside him. So interesting sort of extra thing about Sukuna in domains. This is what Nanami was saying, right? He's working it out for himself in real time. Making it even more complex for him. <laughs> Might be time to update. It was a good starting point. Yeah, at, at the end of the day, that's what Grandpa wanted. It wasn't about death, it was about him helping people. Character growth for the, the teacher, taking responsibility. I appreciate the fact that they didn't kill the bully, because I think that would have been really easy to do, and nobody would have really cared, but it's more satisfying to me if some good comes out of it. It's a powerful team of mentors right there. And happy dancing. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said I fully understood his motivation to give people good deaths from the beginning. I mean, I think it's something like honoring people's lives and seeing humans as, as humans and being valuable or something in that general vicinity. But either way, no matter what it started out as, it's going to adapt over time and it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to get him to a point where he's thinking, you know, you have a thought. He found something he thought was valuable. He went after it. And of course, life being so insane, there's no way he could have conceptualized what his journey would be and, and what he needs and what his values are before he started on it. And it's going to hurt. You know, it's going to suck kind of being in this limbo and having terrible things happen, but he's now on a path where he's working towards something good, and it could be really big. The more he experiences and the more he learns, and the more he's able to keep reflecting like this. It'll be really interesting to see what his final take is, you know, where his character arc goes. I mean, I really have no idea. It could be any number of things. Juju Sampo! Give me some levity, Juju Sampo. Shabu Shabu. That looks amazing. He's a man of many hidden talents. Hey, we got a cooking! Cooking segment. I like this. this is actually really like practically useful for life. I kind of want to do this. Uh huh. 
again, these people just live in this luxurious life. Oh, do they still think he's dead? Right, I totally... I forgot about that. Goji's keeping his existence a secret. Yeah, it's interesting having this gap in their relationship. Unusual in a show. He's kind of separated from his friends. That felt like a real arc. This is an example of something I really like in shows where the villains and the heroes are on a, a parallel path. Speaking of My Hero Academia, this encounter was really well done in terms of its emotional stakes, its outcome, building up the villain, transforming Yuji's thoughts, providing some substance for Nanami, creating the relationship between the two of them, also enhancing fear and respect of Sukuna. This was a preview of things to come, right? This was the first encounter of what might be many and what will certainly be a lot bigger ones. I have a feeling this is one of those episodes that will seem more and more significant as the show goes on.